Uh, a warm welcome to all the attendees. We are just waiting for four o'clock so that others can also join us and then we'll soon begin. So this is a sound check. I hope I'm audible to each one of you. We've done some checks at our end and it was perfect. So I think we are able to hear more people now. Yeah. Perfect. We're starting by four o'clock, it's 3.15 and so just one minute more. In one minute, we're about to start. Yeah, so it's four o'clock. So welcome and a good evening to each one of you attending this session. I can see 75 of us are online right now. And I hope most of you are law aspirants and uh, are sitting tight at home because that's what our government wants us to do. And it's a fair thing to do also to keep all of us healthy. I'm very thankful to the technology which is helping me out to at least uh, you know talk to all of you and uh, you know carry on this webinar where we can do some kind of knowledge exchanging etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, so you know it's uh, so i think I'll, I'll begin here you know rather than uh, waiting more time because four o'clock was the time which we promised so welcome to the second law the, uh, the 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 topic of the webinar today is law uh, career option of gen x as you guys have called the the the, the generation which is so fast that's coming out with memes every now and then on each of the update by the government. So, you know, that's how fast you guys are. So for a fast generation like you, law is turning out to be a career option, which is, you know, which is getting preferred more and more by students. So I keep meeting a lot of students. I travel a lot. I attend some seminars in some schools, etc. So I keep meeting students. So there was a time long back. I'm a veteran in this industry in 2006, seven, when I used to go and ask students how many of you are going for law. And there used to be hardly one or two hand raises. But now when I go and when I ask this question, how many of you want to do law? My God, the kind of hand raises I have. You know, in between there was another time around 2010, 2012, when I used to ask this question. There was a supplement question which I used to ask them that why law? And there was a state of confusion the students had. They were like, uh, I don't know, my friend is doing this, that, 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 etc., etc. But now I'm getting very, I'm, I'm getting a lot of educated answers also the students are telling me corporate law that's what i want to do social work that's what i want to do I said, wow uh, you know again thanks to the internet that students have become like this you know they're, they're able to uh, you know they're able to see these things they're able to uh, analyze these things they are able to decide on better things and that's how it goes you know that that's what makes you a generation z so in this seminar what we want to do is uh, let me just move ahead First of all, I want to appreciate each one of you uh, for taking out time. Uh, no, no, this is an oxymoron here, taking out time because most of you, I'm very sure, might be having time because we are all pulled up in our in our, in our residences. But then again, to take out time means, you know, there might be other things because most of you might also be having your exams, parents specifically, they may have other things at home. You know, for example, I am keeping very busy because, you know, at home I have to assist my wife. So that's how your parents might also be doing. So taking out time and coming and attending a session where we are going to you know, interact and say something about law, which is not that often a, 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 a preferred uh, topic of which people would like to listen, but still coming and giving us time. I'm very thankful to each one of you that you did that. Uh, so let me first lay down what all we are going to discuss today so that you know we have let, we, we have a restricted time also. So in that time, I'll be doing these many things. That's exactly what I'm going to tell you. So these are the things which we're going to do today. First, I'm going to give you those five reasons why the Generation Z is uh, you know, taking up law, why they are opting for law. 
which all career choices are they opting for what is the passion what are those features of a law student which are you know pushing them ahead this comes out of my research because as i said I'm a veteran from 2006 i have been uh, you know uh, mentoring students i meet them inside law school law aspirant community everyone and these are those kind of uh, answers which i have got the next is orientation about lsat an examination which many of the students are aware about but now there are some people who were not so i would be touching upon them i'll be telling you that how to prepare for the same i will i'll be i'll be also guiding you that what makes lsat one of the most preferred law entrance examinations around the globe as you are all aware lsat is an examination which is taken by you know ivy league uh, universities in uh, united states of america so we are going to discuss all those things also and at the end we'll have a questionnaire where i'm going to take questions from you on um, career related things whatever your, your doubts are and also about the admission process or if you're stuck somewhere in the admission process if you have some questions about lsat etc so some rules here uh, you're not allowed to speak because we have taken away that right from you you can ask me questions so if people can see a question mark on the screen the people who are who have logged in from mobile you can see a question mark on your screen you just need to type those questions and send it across to me at the end of the session i will be answering those questions if if I'm not able to take all the questions, we'll surely be emailing it back to you. Students who are attending through mobile, there is a guidance for you. You have to keep it in landscape mode and view. Only then you know, you'll be able to view it more properly. Okay, so these are some ground rules which we are going to set here. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, the very first thing, law, the choice of the change makers and how change makers around the world are opting for it. What are those five reasons because where students are opting for law? The first, uh, I love this much, the, the, this very much. It's called as law students are rebellious students. They are those students. I, I'll tell you something in a form of a story. During my time, I remember the, the, the moment I took this decision that I'm going to do law. I belong to a family of IIT. And then my elder brother was an IIT. And, uh, and family entirely had a lot of IITs who, who were there. So I was also expected that you know I would crack the JE and I will enter into you know uh, the engineering sphere. But then I did not do it, uh, you know, because I met a cousin of mine from National Law School Bangalore, uh, who impressed me a lot because the kind of persona which he had and the way he, uh, you know, pushed me that I should also be doing the five-year course, how it would uh, increase my interpersonal skills, etc. Not just that, I'll tell you what prompted me to do law. I was a rebel right from the start. In my family, I was often seen as someone who uh, who would argue a lot who would you know protest a lot who would say you know i used to get beaten up by my dad a lot because i would argue a lot it was not disrespectfully but then you know challenging of authority that is the you know epicenter of uh, a law student you know of law graduation so i used to challenge authority a lot at my place i used to go and ask my dad hey, dad why are you doing like this why can't we do like this there were questions which used to irritate him, but then he used to admire it also. But then, you know, authority at home and the kind of parenting which we had, I'm very sure none of you had because our dads were very, you know, hard task masters. And then there were no human rights, etc. So we were getting bashed up right at home and also at schools. So there was no human rights, etc. etc. But then I was a rebel. I always had some opinions which were often seen by my parents as something which is, you know, against the tradition of the society, etc. etc. But then I used to support people a lot. I used to fight for animal rights. I used to question things which were happening at times in, you know, in, in a society and ask you, why is this happening? So that kind of a rebel attitude off late, during my time, it would have been rare, but off late, if you have seen, it has started increasing. I'm so happy to see that there are students who are questioning government, as in you know, the, the, the students who are right now at school level, they have questions for the government. They're asking that if this is being done, why can't it be done like this? That's the rebellious kind of an attitude which is prompting more and more students to law. While parents sitting at home would say, Ki, you know, Baccha Battamiz hai, so you know, usko law karwa do. it's not Battamiz. Battamiz is where you're disrespectful. I'm not saying disrespectful. You are a rebel when you go against the set orders and you have solutions where you ask questions and you are the one who also has solutions to the problem and you would be the one who would say, this should not have been done like this. This should have been done like this. I'm very sure many, many of you might be questioning our prime minister on the earth are and why is it being done, etc., etc. See, when you are doing it, exercising your constitutional right, it's all good. But when you are going outside it and doing something illegal, that's why I'm not referring to them. I'm referring to those students 
who have a question, who have a habit of questioning the authority and also trying to make sense of it or trying to understand why a certain set system is being followed or is it the only system to be followed is there any other is, is there any other option related to it so these are the students who could be termed as rebels for me and i love those kind of students believe me whenever i go to a class uh, you know which is full of law aspirants where i go for orient orientation sessions i love those students who will first challenge me whenever if you know i'm, I'm giving them a scenario a hypothetical situation they'll come out with some additional facts etc and i love them i'm like see these are the students who are rebellious who are thinking something out of the box that is what is required you know we we have a lot of student making a powerful citizen now believe me this is something which i love a lot and this is how i was convinced from engineering to what you call as a, you know law because i was very mesmerized by a subject during my schooling which was called as civics you know and i used to wonder what it takes to get into the parliament what power these people have I, i i remember a question which i used to ask my dad the dad these people who are sitting in the parliament how do they reach there i said you know what what gives them the power to reach there as a child i used to ask this question so think about it when i was in civics class and when it was being taught to me where a faculty would come in and she will teach that okay these very lok sabha seats this is how power is divided this is how legislation is done think about it oh i was very impressed i was like wonderful this is exactly what i wanted to learn believe me that helped me to become a better citizen because there were times when i used to counsel people who were my dad's friend much much higher than my age that what is constitutional and what is unconstitutional because there is a famous dialogue which you know society for me is divided into laymen and lawmen that's how i see, see them lawmen people who have done law and they know the law inside out layman for a layman i'll tell you a very specific dialogue which most people say when they are frustrated with the system they say constitution should be set on fire constitution ko uthake kachre ke dabbe mein phek dena chahiye that's exactly what they say believe me when someone says that i feel a lot of pain because it's not how it is our constitution is one of the best written constitutions in the world and when i was in standard 12 i remember the zest which i had to understand constitution the cousin of mine who was in ns bangalore he gifted me with a book which was written by glanville austin a foreigner who has written a book on india it is called as cornerstone of constitution and believe me i read it because that was the kind of interest i had to understand what are my rights and my duties and that's what makes more and more and you know i'm just telling you those attributes which i had and why i took up law and that's what i can see in students now so i do a lot of social media you know uh, bickering i i go here and there and i i, I try to read what the students reading right now and i have seen school students who are so well versed with the rights and duties which they have and when they are arguing with someone who's elder to them in their age they start quoting constitutional authorities and like, wonderful that's the kind of citizens which we have i'm not saying that they quote case laws etc like a lawyer but then at least they know what they deserve as a citizen of india for example the entire ca and rc debate which is going on i have seen school students who are so well versed with the law they have read the law and we have celebrities online who have no idea about the law and they are opposing the law there are students who are opposing and supporting with proper constitutional arguments they are doing and that's what i think makes them better citizens because they are not the ones who just protest and they just scream but they have question and they think they deserve answer and that's the system which we live in which makes them better citizens and believe me all these when i when i when i'm enumerating this at the end of it i'll tell you all these is not just going to make you employable as per the need of the society but also it's going to give you something called as leadership which will make you survive any kind of recession believe me we are we are living in very dangerous times you can see what is happening we are in lockdown situation a lot of recession is going to happen but i would say law as a profession is recession proof and that i have seen and i'm experiencing and i I'll, i'll tell you that how it is at the end of it let me just go ahead with all these things uh, the next is a rational thinker <clears throat> yeah because you're not taught certain formulas and to just fix it you are taught written word of law how you know it is written in a textbook it can be any law it can be in indian penal code it can be in the marriage the hindu marriage act etc but then they don't tell you that this is the end of it it is written how it is written 
On the other hand, they encourage you think. What is the other possibility about it also? Think about it tomorrow if situation changes, how the world is going to react to it. And for that, believe me, you have to read, you have to understand, you have to see human behavior. And that makes you a lot, lot, lot rational. I'll tell you my own experience. I was the youngest in the family. So I, I, I think most of you are in the youngest in the family would agree with me that we are the ones who are least you know, taken into consideration while making a decision in the family. Uh, as I say, ghar ki dabi kuchli janta hai hum lo. Okay. So no one really, so that's exactly how I was. I was the most pampered, but then again, you know, while taking a decision, my dad never even asked me. He's like, yeah, he's, a, he's the youngest friend, he can wait. So in that kind of situation, it was a big moment of my life when I was in the third year of my law graduation. Uh, we were visited by a neighborhood auntie. And she told my dad that she wants to seek legal advice from me. To which naturally my dad was like, he's in third year, hai wo. he doesn't know anything. What, what, are you, what are you talking about? And she was like, no, I just want to discuss with him a situation which we don't want to discuss with any lawyer. And if he tells us, we'll go and tell, you know, we will discuss it with a lawyer because we think it's quite personal. And we being a family, you know, I would, I would like to discuss with him. So it was a big moment of my life, you know, in front of my dad, someone has come home to ask me a legal question. So with a notebook in my hand and with a pen in my hand, I just walked into that room and I started, ask, you know, you know, I started having this discussion with that auntie. Now, the problem is that, you know, auntie had was also very unique. It was like uh, her, her daughter was married off to a man who was very good gentleman, no dowry harassment, nothing, but there was a problem. Uh, the problem was uh, some nights he would get into a fit of a rage and in that fit of a rage he would start beating his wife very badly, typical WWF style. And the auntie was so illustrative, she even started telling you what all he does. She was like, aise utha ke diwar pe maar deta hai. And then she was like, he will put his hand into her mouth and try to pull out her tongue. And the moment she started saying these things, my dad overtook me and he was like, Are madam, divorce, divorce what are you doing? Go for a divorce. It takes guts, you know, to say something in front of your dad. And at that age, I remember I told my dad that she's here not for emotional advice, she's here for legal advice. And then I started giving the legal advice where I, at that age, you know, when I was just in the third year, I started explaining her the concept called as marriage under Hindu Marriage Act and how, what is marriage? That what is, you know, the, the, the post-divorce agony which a couple may go through. And I was zero in support of divorce. I started convincing her that get him treated. This could be a case of schizophrenia. He's a good guy. What may happen when the divorce case happens? There will be allegations, blah, blah, blah. And then I told her that the time taken, there is a, there is a period which will be given to you. Rather than that, why don't you go and consult a doctor? You're saying the guy is good. I don't know what all I said. The auntie was so impressed. She got up. She gave me a lot of blessings no fees it's okay <laughs> but then you know at that age I, I did not expect also and then she went back and the moment i turned back the first person i saw was my dad staring at me like this i said what dad to which he says how have you grown up how how do you know so much about marriage and that's when i told them that i told him that, that this is this is something that is taught to me you know these are the kind of things and not just the the, the, the written word of it we are also asked to read research and also understand the dynamics of society and, and what is marriage. You know marriage as, you know, a relation of love, bonding, etc., etc. We see it as a legal relationship. And that's, you know, makes you mature. And that's what makes you a rational thinker also. Because believe me, the kind of teaching and the kind of requirement of the, the presence of mind which is required in law, you have to experience it when you get into a law school and when you sit inside a law school listen to the professors making you know creating a hypothetical situation and giving you where you would sit and think am i qualified enough to even give a to give an answer but then slowly you realize you are discussing those things and you are rationally thinking and you are able to come out with concrete judgments related to those things why it's your read that's what makes you a rational thinker the next is a mature youngster yes once you take up law, believe me, you mature quite early. I, I, I remember my, my, my friends who were doing BCom, BB, etc. They used to call me uncle because wherever we had a situation, 
I used to come out with the most mature, you know, analysis of the same. And they used to say, Are yaar, tu kaise baat karta? you talk like an uncle. So, so look, this is how it is. I think it is. Though that time they never gave any heed to whatever I said and they used to call me uncle. There was a time when I felt so proud. I was in the fourth year and these guys had cracked cat and they started requesting me that why don't I train them for GDPI? And I was like, why should I train you? Because you know, I'm of your own age. You should go to some coaching center and do it. To with these friends of mine who used to call me uncle, etc., they started telling me that, dude, the way you talk, the way you say things, that's exactly what is required to crack a GDPI in an IIM. Because you sound very mature. You are you, the, the way you answer, the way you speak, the way you are able to project things, the kind of knowledge which you have is something which we think, why should we go and pay some coaching? On the other hand, you are able to tell us those things. I was like, oh, is that? <laughs> oh, wonderful. And believe me, I have seen that those students who, are, who have started preparing for law, they're a lot mature. I, I take hypothetical situations to them. I start asking them questions and the kind of options those students come out with. I, I do think that is much, much, much mature than any other student doing anything else. And that's that's something just prompting more and more students to take up law because youngsters they're getting impressed by students who are preparing for law they're coming in i remember uh you know when, when i was working with the prep industry my the, the place where i used to work was just bank opposite uh you know uh another coaching which was uh preparing students for engineering and i remember there were a lot of students who used to come and ask me what do you teach here i said why why do you want to know you know because during our recess, we will sit down and we will be discussing things like, you know, uh, our, our subjects things like physics, etc., etc. Your students would come and sit and talk about interesting things about governance, international affairs, etc., etc. And the way they are able to answer, uh, the, the way they are able to decide on those issues is something which is impressing us. And that's what I said. It makes them mature. And that's exactly what they are learning right at the time when they are preparing for law. Powerful individual, you are someone who knows what is right and what is wrong. It makes you a lot powerful, believe me. If you want to see that power, you should walk into the corridors of Supreme Court, High Court, and you should see young individuals with that power. They are advising people. They, they, they have people at their beck and call who wait for them, take appointment, meet them, because they know what runs in the society. What runs the society? Law runs the society. If they're dealing with taxation, etc., and if times were normal, believe me, this is the time and maximum CAs and lawyers will be working together to clean up the mess of a lot of individuals <laughs> because this is the time of closing and people will be running here and there and they'll be trying to, you know, find solutions to all those problems they have created, which, you know, you have to take appointment from people. You are a powerful person. It's not that that person is coming to you because he just wants to pay you. He comes to you because he knows what you know, what is right and what is wrong. And that is a kind of a path. So these are the five reasons which I have seen that why Generation Z is so mesmerized with law and why they are they're running towards this profession and they, 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 they want to somehow crack law and get into a law school, get that kind of an exposure. I have one personal favorite also, and that's this. It's called as a never retiring profession. And, you, know, you all know that, you know, Ram, Ram Jitmalani, he passed away. Till his final days also, he never retired. If you have attended any lecture or any seminar by him, he often would start by saying that I'm still a student of law. Because once a student of law, you have to keep on studying. And that is something which, which interests me also a lot. In a way, I am retired because, you know, I, I created my own company. I sold it off. Now I'm working with OP Jindal Global University because I love, I don't want to just sit, you know, and, and, and just be relaxed. I want to work, I want to meet, because this is the time when I can do that. And that's what makes this profession so beautiful. And moreover, I can teach, you know, I can, I can speak, I can, I can uh, talk to people, which I love. And I'm doing that. I'm not, a, I'm not a practicing lawyer. And that is something which law graduation has given me. And I'm very sure I won't retire, you know, though, though there, there, there have been forces which keeps telling me that, you know, relax. You know, you, you have enough and you can relax, but no, no, that's not something. And this is something which makes, you know, this this was one of those uh, 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 options through which my cousin, you know, who was doing law, told me that, they are, you know, each profession may end somewhere, but law 
through, it will keep on evolving. Even if, he, he gave me a very good idea. He said, even if humanity, uh, you know, it, there's a world war four or five, or if Corona is able to change the boundaries of the entire world, there still would be some kind of law. There still would be need for lawyers. Lawyers would still be there. There will be people who would respect you because you exactly know not what the law of the land is, but at least the jurisprudence that how law or why law is important for creating a society where people can at least coexist. Fair enough, I think I've, I've given you a, a fair idea about this. Let's go to the next, uh, uh, you know, uh, next part of the uh, webinar where we are going to talk about law entrance examination. So often I ask students, why do you think uh, a law school would take an entrance examination? What is the purpose behind taking this examination? Is it just an excuse to select few students and say, okay, we, we are done? No, each entrance examination has its own uh, psyche. You know? There is a process. It's very simple, like I've written here. It's basically to filter out law students from law aspirants. Because yes, we are in a country where the moment people, when they listen, uh, and uh, when they have an idea that, okay, this career profession is good and more and more people are going, they just join the bandwagon without even understanding when I do this, what will be the end of it? What are the qualities I require to be a lawyer? No, 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 they don't have any idea. They're like, okay, there are four to five subjects which I need to master, I'll do it, and then five years, and then after five years, placement, that's it. Believe me, don't take a career choice just like this. Don't make a career choice just like this. You have to, you have to at least understand that why should I go, I have the qualities specific for that particular profession or just because everyone is pushing me, I should go. No, entrance examinations are basically for this. In our country specifically, I've seen students decide on career options just because many others are also doing it. They don't even sit for entrance examination with a, with a mind that let me take this entrance examination to understand do I have those qualities to do that kind of a graduation or not? You know, this is a question by me to all of you. Do you think you are sitting for that entrance examination for this? Or are you sitting just because you want to crack that examination and gain a seat? Believe me, please change your attitude. You should sit in an examination with a mindset that I'm sitting because let me see whether I'm made for that profession or not. That's why I request all students that you should appear in multiple examinations and test yourself. I read it, you know, I think it was in Michelle Obama's book where she says that when she and Barack Obama, they appeared for uh, LSAT, they had no idea they wanted to be lawyers. They gave multiple examinations. That's how students in India should also think. But sadly, that's not the idea here. <laughs> so, you know, that's one of the reasons why law entrance examination is there. Uh, examination to scan student caliber on set parameters. Every entrance examination, the subjects which have been asked to you, they have set parameters. They're there to basically test you on certain qualities of yours. If you have those kind of qualities, you're welcome. If you do not have, yet if you crack and get inside, then you realize, oh, that was the reason they asked me this thing. So when it comes to LSAT, I'll tell you that how, how, how it's, it's a part of it. Now each subject has its own philosophy, its own purpose. Believe me, everything they ask you in every examination, any entrance examination around the globe, even in India, believe me, it has a purpose behind it. And we are living in times where students don't understand. They just take entrance examination as another challenge. They need to meet, they need to crack, they need to get into uh, 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 law school uh, or any 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 uh, graduate school for that matter. You know, few years they'll try, and it you know my heart pains also because I do often meet some students who say I could have been a better engineer. Some engineering students say I could have been a better lawyer. So that kind of a scenario should be avoided where a student should appear for multiple entrance examinations and try to understand whether he or she has the aptitude and the requirements to do that kind of a course or not. That's where I would introduce you to the examination called as LSAT, which is more than 100 year old test. It is you know, conducted or it is organized by a group called as Law School Admission Council. They're based out of USA. And they have been doing this for the past more than 100 years. And why do they do it? Because, as I said, law in US is very different to law in India. We have a five-year integrated program. Uh, students after 12th can crack it. But in US, the model is very different. You have to do a graduation of four years. And after which, student will prepare for these entrance examinations, including LSAT. 
if you score good in LSAT, then the student decides that, okay, I am fit to do law. I should go for JD, which is Juris Doctor, uh, which is a three-year program. In India, we have this five-year program where we could see, and it's a success, believe me, in India, it's a success, the five-year program. Why? Because, as I said, the demographic situation and the geopolitical situation of the country is very different. And students are able to adapt to the course much, much better. <coughs> much better. Because of which this course has become a major hit. So LSAT is an examination, tests you on some specific skills of yours, which are very important for even those five years of your law school. Because law, as I said, is a professional degree. I repeat, it's a professional degree. I, I hope all of you understand when I say professional degree, it goes something like this. Professional degrees are medicine, uh, law, chartered accountants, etc., where you are the one who would be carrying yourself forward. It's not a team activity. You may build your own team. You know, you'll select people like you, but you are the one who will run everything. For example, the best law firm in India once, Amarchan Mangaldas, when they form Amarchan and Mangaldas, their name is still running, though it has been divided into two different parts, but their name is still running. They were the ones, they were the professionals who created it. It's upon you. So the question is, do you have it in you to create that kind of an impact in these five years where you are able to create a professional out of you? That's the kind of a question, or that's the kind of an entrance examination you should be appearing to test whether you have the skills to survive those five years and beyond. And MSAD does it exactly, believe me. It does it in a very, very, in, in a, in a, in, with, with ultimate finesse, they ask you those questions. Let me explain that to you a bit. There are two things majorly which LSAT is going to ask you, which is English and reasoning. These are the two things which they specifically ask you. English, when I say English, you can see a British flag there. I'm referring to British English, not the American English or the WhatsApp and Twitter English, which you are more acquainted to. But British English. Why? Because most of the laws are written around the globe, they are written in British English. For the simple reason that in British English, there is no ambiguity. Can a law be ambiguous? No. And moreover, when it comes to law, it's all about comprehension. It's all about comprehending the written word of law. Moreover, we are in a common law country. In common law country, whatever is written down, a lawyer does nothing. He would use it, interpret it. He'll go through some case laws and he'll try to make arguments out of it and interpret that law to his favor. The opposition will be doing the exact thing. You'll stand in front of a judge. You'll argue the one who argues better and is able to convince the judge that his interpretation of law is better wins the case. So don't you think English is important? Reading is important. Uh, reading and comprehending is important. That's exactly what LSAT is testing you on. LSAT is testing you on those skills of English. Which are the most important skills. And that's why in US they accept LSAT. That's why in many of the Ivy League law schools they are accepting LSAT with reasoning. Yes, your reasoning also has to be good if you are a law student, if you are a lawyer, if you are someone who's a law graduate and wants to do just anything else. And it's our reasoning which, which makes us better than most of our peer group. Because when we stand and when you are when we argue, we just do not say anything which comes into our mind. I'll give you an example which is quite infamous. I'm just referring to it. I, I know many of you may might get angry with it. But did you see the way the Nirbhaya rape accused lawyer was giving reasonings? There were times you can hate him. There were times when he was right. He was using the law. He was using his own interpretation to save his client. As I said, we may hate him, but he was doing a good job. Sitting in our cabin, we used to think, what is he doing? Why, why, why does he want to save those people? That's what a human inside me was saying. But as a lawyer, we were, we, we, we were like bewildered the manner in which he was using law. Now, move out this wrong example. Think about some right examples or some, some fair examples, which you'll be taught in law school. And we don't have time. That's why I'm not using those case laws. I have a lineage of case where I, where, where, where I explain to students that how these two subjects are the most important subject for a student. And believe me, this is exactly what you're going to do for the next five years of your life and beyond. And LSAT as an examination is exactly that examination which is testing. And this year, most probably, I'm not promising it here, but most probably it is going to be conducted before CLAT. It is going to be conducted before CLAT because still we have not changed our date. If it is changed, we will notify you 100%.
But LSAT is on the date which it was decided. So CLAT has already moved ahead. We are still on 70. And believe me, giving LSAT before CLAT would be a very, very wise thing to do because the manner in which these two entrance examination is tested to you, it will help you a lot in other entrance examinations as well. And the pattern in which the kind of questions they, that they ask, most of you who have appeared for this examination know that the pattern and everything else is also something which has been flawless all throughout these 10 years. So, you know, that's 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 about LSAT. Now, before I move on, there is something about LSAT which I just want to give you a hint about, uh, which makes LSAT very special. LSAT doesn't have max, one of those... Uh, now, one of those subjects, which is like a nemesis for many of the students who are preparing for law, there is no general study, so there is no cramming which is involved. There is no rot learning which is involved. And believe me, in law, there is no rot learning. People have created that kind of myth that you have to rot learn those sections and then go and write. Sorry, bare acts are also allowed nowadays in most of the law schools. Even in all India bar exam, they are allowing bare acts where you can carry bare acts, you can see the section and you can write. It's about your interpretation, as I said. It's about how you use the section to your benefit. It's not about how much you can rot learn. Okay, that's 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 the key to it. But this is something which I love the most. There is no negative marking and there is no reservation-based policies. The last line is for us, as in Jindal Global Law School. There is no reservation. Admission to Jindal is based purely on the basis of merit. So any student you will find inside this campus is LSAT approved, has given LSAT and has scored a good LSAT percentage. That means this entrance examination, we test you on the score of things, that student has appeared in this, and he has scored a good percentile, and is sitting here. No reservations, nothing. No state reservation, no form of reservation you would see in our law school. And that's what makes us, you know, whatever we have achieved in this 10 years. You might have seen that how we have scaled up in the rankings, QS international rankings, uh, you know, they have ranked us number one in law school. There is a set parameter which you might have read that how they have ranked us ahead of many other national law schools. It was a very composite way of ranking the way they have done it. And, you know, that's what makes us special. Moving on further, why Jindal? Why Jindal Global Law School? Believe me, uh, I have been someone who has been observing law schools pan India. And what Jindal has done in these 10 years has impressed me so much. And that's the reason why I'm here and I'm, I'm, I'm working with Jindal. And believe me, working with them, I've understood one thing. That is, this is a no compromise institution when it comes to academic excellence. And that is something which you can see in the kind of faculties which the, the, this university has. The kind of faculty ratio which we maintain, one is to 10. I bet no law school in India is maintaining that kind of a faculty student ratio. And that's why when a student requires a faculty, the faculty is there. And the kind of teaching which takes place here is a global standard. It's not just where a faculty would come and would try to finish up the syllabus. On the other hand, the faculty would want to want a student to read more of what has been taught. Interdisciplinarity. That's one of the best things which I have seen in this campus, which I missed out when I was a law student. General Global Law School, the University has different other schools also, like School of Business, School of Liberal Arts, School of Design. Now, the best thing about admission in general global law school is when you are a law student, you would also want to read some subjects of business school, say entrepreneurship. Uh, you would want to learn uh, psychology from liberal arts. In general, you are given this benefit that all other law schools also offer you, you know, electives where you can study some selected subjects from other law schools without paying anything. It's absolutely free. And those will also be marked as credit to you. Think about it. When you graduate, when you talk about employability, what would be your employability? What, you know, you, you'll be able to quote many other things. Compare it, you know, compare your score sheet or compare your uh, performance creed with anyone else, you're just too good. So if I was an employer, 100%, I would look into these things and I'd say, my goodness, this, this, this guy has no psychology also. My, uh, the, 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 the position, the vacancy which I have in my office requires the student to know this also, entrepreneurship also. I would go for this. That's something. This is just one of those things which I'm telling you. Otherwise, there are so many different things within the has. So we have attached some videos here, some YouTube links, which I would request you to go ahead and uh, you know visit. Uh, we have also launched a course this year. Its name is BA Legal Studies. 
it's one of its own kind of course in India. It's for the first time that someone has launched this course in India. Uh, it's a humanities course. Let me be very clear. It's not a law course. That means you won't be able to practice when you once you have done three years of BA legal studies. Once you have done three years of BA legal studies, you can surely graduate and do the three year LL. Why have you done that? There's a major question which many students and in fact, I am very mesmerized by the fact that there are students who are coming and telling me that they want to do this course and not the five year course. Why did we do this? Because there are many students who have still not decided about law that would they want to do law or not. This is one of those courses which is running internationally. Yeah, UC Berkeley is one of those law schools which is running this course. But what they do is for three years, they'll be teaching students about the theory about law. For example, let me give you an idea. Before you start studying about International Court of Justice or international law, how about reading the theory behind how international law developed? What was the need behind it? What was the history about it? What is the concept of international law? Theory part, that will be taken care of in BA legal studies. In BA legal studies, that particular push will be given to you. Theoretical learning will be done to you, done. With that, we'll also be giving you practical learning where we'll be telling you what is legal writing all about. We'll tell you about how in, in the world of law, a particular theory is put to use. So that's the kind of a course it is. So in three years, you understand completely the theories of law, also the jurisprudence of law, and also the skill part of law. And then you graduate to a three-year law. So, you know, this is for those students, as I, I, I again repeat, who are not very sure about that, you know, do I want to do law or not? Let me just first see these three, three years. After three years, you can, it's, it's just like a humanities course. You can go ahead and do any course, not just law. You can do MBA, you can do any other courses. But that's the specific part of this course, which has been very beautifully created. We, we have a, in, in handout section, you can see that the brochure is there. You can download it from there. And, uh, you know, we also have a LSAT past year papers, uh, one of the paper which we have given there where you can download it. And I want to take this um, opportunity to also tell you that as you, you all are staying at home and staying safe, uh, LSAT also has one more brilliant option. It is like you can sit at home and you can read and that too absolutely free. Khan Academy has a course on LSAT, which is absolutely free, which can be specifically, you, know, you can you can sit at home and you can attend the entire session. And believe me, if you attend those classes, that this, uh, this is something which I've heard from the students who have cracked LSAT, it helps you a lot. Because that is for LSAT International, you are preparing for LSAT India. If you compare the, the both, I think LSAT India is comparatively easier. But if you're preparing for LSAT International and if you're preparing for, uh, you know, uh, if you're preparing LSAT India, the chances of you scoring a percentile gets higher. And yes, when you score a higher percentile, the option of scholarships which are given in our university also gets higher. So that's one of those things. If you want that link, we can send you an email separately, which we have devised, where we'll be sending you all these links with some extra papers, etc. And, you know, you can, you can get that. So uh, before uh, we move on to the question section, there are some questions which I want each one of you to ask uh, yourself. These are some, this is something which I do to a lot of students to understand that, you know, uh, do they have a law student inside them or not? Uh, question number one, do you enjoy arguments? I'm very sure most of you might be saying yes. Do you feel for social issues, you know, women empowerment, uh, reservations, etc., etc.? Do you enjoy advising, counseling people? You know, very sure you, all of you, you know, unanimously might be saying a yes to this because as a, you know, as a student, it, it, I, I can tell you the moment your friend comes and tells you that, okay, I had a fight with my parents. Who is the one who advises and counsels them? You, I bet I'll tell you what needs to be done. Does politics fascinate you? Not politicians, I'm talking about politics. How the, 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 power, the power center in our, in our country, how it is regulated. Are you fascinated by the business world? Uh, if the answer is an affirmative, believe me, you have a law student inside you. You belong to the Generation Z and you are into that soon. So now the house is open to questions, except for these three things, which you can see, because I have taken a lot of seminars and students at times ask me questions. They're very vague. Uh, so I've just tried to give you an idea. Questions like, Ache din ka baayenge, coronavirus, when is it going to end? And who is driving Salman Khan's car? So not questions like this, but questions centered around our webinar and any of those questions which connects to you, you know, relating to the admission. I, I'm, I'm also joined by Dev Jyoti, who will be with me, who will also be helping me out in solving these questions. So if you have a question, 
what I would do is I can see your questions if you send me. Okay, I have already some questions. Do we enjoy staying in Jindal? Absolutely. Not just students, believe me, uh, a, a person like me also loves staying in Jindal because it's one of the most uh, you know, beautiful places around in India, if you ask me. Why don't you visit the campus once all these things are done? Because see, I may sit here and I may boast a lot. The best experience of Jindal is once you walk into the campus. Once you come into this campus, believe me, uh, we give you a campus tour. We'll be able to show you why Jindal is today the rank number one law school in India. I'll surely take you to the library, my dear. Believe me, this is one of the best libraries. As a law student, I'm telling you, this is one of the best law libraries you've ever seen. If you are asking me about sporting facilities, come and witness. We have an Olympic-sized swimming pool. We have tennis courts. We have every facility which makes us, you know, one of the best choices of students. Okay, so I'll take questions. I'll take uh, questions not just one by one. On the other hand, go. Procedure of uh, getting admission, I think I've already answered that. It's through LSAT, LSAT purely. We take through percentile of students. How to explore that you are interested towards law. Uh, I gave you some options. Does it interest you? And then all those qualities which I just gave you an idea about. If it interests you, I think, uh, you know, you're interested in law. And if you have a zeal for reading, if you have a zeal for interpretation things, I think that's, that's great. Procedure of getting admission, I've already answered that. Will the email be sent to all joined on this webinar? Absolutely, we'll be sending an email to all of you. Uh, we have your email ID, so we'll be sending that email with uh, <clears throat> the study material, etc. Don't worry about it. Uh, can I get that link? I don't get this link you are talking about. If it is about uh, the link to uh, Khan Academy, surely. We'll, we'll be sending you a mail. It will have all those things. What is the best way to study for LSAT? <clears throat> Very simple, the Khan Academy thing, and there are some material available on discoverlaw.in. They it's called as a bundle or what they're selling. I think you should buy that. That book is called a super prep book, and that has helped a lot of students. But I would I would say attend Khan Academy lectures, they're very good. Uh after three years of law of oh okay, after BA legal studies, what are your options? You can appear for UPSC, you can go for higher studies. Within that three year itself, we have uh, international collaborations where we'll be sending you to uh, law schools in the US where you can go. You can plan further studies uh, in humanities also. You know, that, 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 those are the options. The best option would be doing the uh, BA legal studies and uh, you know, going ahead and doing uh, law, which makes you a lawyer. Finally, you are a BA LLB and you can practice law or you can go for corporates. And you know, you're theoretically much more superior. That's exactly what I could say. BA or BBA, okay, one major question by Sejal, which I'm very sure many others are also going to ask me that, you know, BA or BBA. Believe me, I'm a BLLB, and without being unbiased, both of them are equal. None of them is about, uh, about the other. BBLLB was basically created by the Bar Council of India as an experiment, which became a hit. Because many students were also interested specifically for corporate law. So if you have an interest in corporate law, I think BBLLB is something which you should go for. But are you interested in the same or not is a question. So if you are a commerce student, that's the trend which we have seen. If you're a commerce student and you understand uh, the subjects of commerce better, you may be interested in BBLLB because the kind of courses, etc. So I would give you an advice. This decision is not taken by us. For me, both of them are equal because the law subjects which will be taught to you are hardly different. There are some extra subjects of law which are taught to them for, for sure. And specifically in Jindal, we have done that because we created some extra subjects to you know increase uh, that kind of a pull for the student. But otherwise, if you see at the end of the day, you will become a law graduate, you know, and with your interest. And it's not like if you're a BBA LLB, you can only do corporate law. Still, you can come and do all other things as well. So it's just a demarcation of subjects which has been done. BA is purely a humanities course, course where you'll be taught subjects like political science, you'll be taught subjects like uh, uh, you know uh, 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 political science, sociology, etc., economics. These are those things. economics is uh, is uh, similar in both the subjects. So these are some few things. So you can look at the entire course structure on our uh, website. So BLLB and BBLLB, the entire course structure is given to you. Still, if there is some doubt, you can connect to us. Cutoff for Jindal, it varies every year. Last year it was uh, 60 percentile, but 
Each year we have been seeing a surge in percentile. I'll tell you why, because the number of takers are increasing. And this year we are expecting a huge increase because we have seen that students are preparing for LSAT in a way that they're going, because many students have told me this. I'm not, I'm not, this is not my version, but students say that if you prepare for LSAT, your flat also will get improved because the kind of questions that they are asking in LSAT, flat has also tried to, you know, to come to the same terms so those general studies questions and all which you are seeing so that's exactly so that's why many students are appearing this year so i i, can, I cannot give you a definitive cutoff but last year it was 60 it may increase and it has been increasing is there an interview round no no no. we do not hold an interview round for law applicants for five year course we do not have a uh a interview for three-year LLB course, does OP general accept uh, DU LLB score? See, our priority is always, always LSAT. Believe me, because it's an examination which is more easier to crack for a student. Uh, because in DU LLB, uh, I, I would request one of my, uh, you know, teammate to mail you separately about this thing. You know, we know he takes care of this. But my advice is please appear for LSAT. We do accept it, but it, it's a very rare scenario which we accept. We stress more on LSAT because of various reasons, scholarship. There are, there are many reasons why we prefer LSAT. But yes, we do accept, but we prefer LSAT. I'm not from a wealthy background. Okay. See, the kind of scholarships which we provide, it is for students who are from humble backgrounds. But you need not be wealthy. I meet so many students inside this campus who are not from a very affluent family. They are all from humble families. I, I belong to a very believe. I'll tell you my story. You know, my dad was an engineer in PHL. My mom was working with government. So I also belong to a very humble family. And I'm from a national law school. But that time, even the you know, no national law school charges you less than one lakh rupees. During that time, it was a major thing for my parents also. So I took a loan, I studied, I paid off that entire loan. And why? Because throughout those five years, that was the driving force for me. I kept on telling myself that no, I will not ask a single penny from my parents. And believe me. That is what I pride myself about. That when I got when when I got you know placement from that day, I have not asked a single penny from my father, and I started paying him back, even though he keeps telling me that no, I don't require. But it's a kind of you know uh, what you say. It's a kind of something which 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 tells me that I should do it, and that's the way I think. And had I been in your shoes. Believe me, I would have taken a loan and studied here. I have scored very good in LSAT. I would have gone for scholarship and I would have backed it because this is something, and that's why it's called a scholarship. It's for scholars. So if you can perform well in this examination, which is called as LSAT, I hope you're, Chetan, you're very clear about how LSAT is. It's, it's, a, it's an examination where you can easily score this percentile. You just need to have a good English. And when I say English, I'm not talking about the your English. I'm talking about the basic English, which has been taught to you. And it becomes easy for you. Can we visit the campus? See, as of now, because of the government regulations, uh, the campus is entirely closed down. Uh, I'm so sorry. But then when the situation oozes out or eases out, I would be very, very happy to host you here inside the campus for which you just need to email us and just need to tell us that, you know, uh, uh, you want to visit. We'll be more than happy to host you. And when you come, we can even arrange lunch for you inside the campus. We'll host you properly. So that's we are a very transparent university. You can visit the entire campus. You can talk to us, and we love uh, hosting, uh, you know, uh, parents and students. But as of now, it's entirely closed because because of government regulations and reasons better known to you. Does Jindal offer scholarship? Yes, absolutely, it offers scholarship. It is again dependent entirely upon LSAT scores. And if you ask me what is the safest score in LSAT, I would say each year it depends upon the kind of paper that they said, but Try to aim for 99 percentile where you can get a good scholarship, which is 75 percentage of you know of your fees. Doesn't the large batch size play a role? Okay, uh, okay, I need to tell you this. Doesn't the large batch size play a role, negative role in peer connection and placement option? No, I'll tell you. People think that 600 student size is uh, you know put up in a in, in a single room. No, no, no. See, we have a batch size of 60, and there are 60 students per batch size, and that's why we have from more, more than 200 faculties here. Have you seen the faculty size of ours? When you say large batch size, you should also go to our website and see the kind of faculties we have. We have just hired more than 100 faculties very recently into the campus. So, you know, that's not a problem. Peer connection, see, peer is something which we cannot control. 
you you go to any law school you will find different different kinds of people peer connection is something you have to create and for that you need to you need to consult our students we have every kind of students here and when it comes to placement it is those students who maintain good peer group study mm -hmm. properly and the ones who get who get placed and that is everywhere you go to any place any university even in harvard university if you go you know these kind of situations are there and you know after getting placed also when you work you'll find it that peer connections etc etc they, they, these things might be there you have to be a kind of a person and moreover large batch size is something which we are often asked a question about and believe me we are like six to seven national law schools inside us that's the way we define it and they are operating with specific finesse and all these students constitute that major group which is driving this university and if you ask me there are two factors which are driving this university faculties and students and we love our students the way they are working the way they are using their they are utilizing the campus the way they are representing us at, at world forums they would not have done that if they would sit and think about it that okay it's a large bar size what is my identity they are going for it that's the kind of uh, you know the, 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 that's the kind of opportunities that they're getting so it doesn't matter so don't worry about it. what percentile do we have to score to get a scholarship see i i, I answered that already so i'm just you know uh, 90 99 percent i aim for it the best scholarship which is 75 percent of the fees you'll get if you score 99 percentile aim it you know because if i give you a low score i'm very sure you're just going to sit and say okay i'm just going to score this that's why i'm saying 99 percentile LLM course, I wanted to know about the admission procedure. Very simple, LSAT. Please prepare for LSAT. Go to discoverlaw.com, dot in, fill up the form, appear for LSAT. There's a separate paper for LSAT. Appear for it, and then if you are selected, our uh, you know admission personnel is going to get in touch with you. It's again LSAT. What about placement? Placements, my dear, it's like uh, we have a document. I'll share it on on the mail where we talk about placements. But let me be very clear if a particular university talks about placement and assures you placement i am not a big fan of that line where i say assured placement because universities are not placement agencies you have to understand one i don't even know you Sundar. i don't know what are your plus what are your minuses how can i tell you that yes i'm going to get you place don't you think that's a fast but then in the same way i want to tell you this is a university which has a specific department called as career services department it works 365 days to get you placed it works not just to get you placed it also from the very first year will also work on orienting you about how to make your resume where to apply it will get you application details it works on you they have profile of yours on which they work and that's the pain which they take and there's a separate department for it it's not student run body it is run by professionals who are hired for it who have been working in placement agencies. They are the ones who are hired, and you would be one of the files for him on which he has to work, and you're a target for that person. But then he will not be able to help you if you are not utilizing all the facilities here, you are not upgrading your CV, you are not using the opportunities given to you, you are not upgrading your resume. You will only be able to get you placed. So it's not, you know, I hope you understand what I said. It's not a short placement scenario like everyone else says. We'll get you placed, don't worry, but you have to earn that placement. We'll get you opportunities. Take CLAT rankings. No, we don't take CLAT rankings. As I said, we take uh, LSAT. For BA Legal Studies, this course, we have made an exception, but again, I'm telling you, LSAT is always our priority. More about the scholarship program. Scholarship program is very simple. We have a, a, a scholarship bouquet where top 200 students out of LSAT collective all the courses as in all the courses of law we give it uh, so we start from 10 percent and it goes up to 75 percent of your uh, you know annual fees and yeah, it's purely based upon LSAT and nothing else does Jindal offer three-year LLB absolutely we offer three-year LLB and I can combine with a master's and try yes absolutely Samridhi you are bang on it we have a school which uh, deals with international relations and diplomacy. In fact, we are holding a seminar. We are holding a webinar on it. I think it's on 6th. Uh, you'll be notified as and I'll, I'll make sure that your name goes to them. And please do attend that seminar also. We have a master's uh, degree in that also. And it, it's, it's a great thing if you, uh, I'm so happy that you're a very oriented kid. You know, you, you, you already know what you need to do. You need to do a three LLB and then you want to do this. Uh, I know what, what, what career path you are into. All the best. It's, it's, we have it. Don't worry. 
how is Inder for, for overall child development? It's absolutely great place to be because when a student comes here, I'm telling you because I have been mentoring CLAT aspirants also. I have had experiences of sending in a student here who was very shy, who would hardly even speak to me. When I used to call him, he would first you know, stammer and speak. And then there was a day when he was in the second year, he called me up and when I picked up the phone, I was so I was so surprised when he says, uh, sir, this is the right time to talk to you. And I was like, man, what, what has happened? What a kind of a personality change has happened to him. And then he starts discussing with me about what he is doing. And believe me, it mesmerized me because he was from a very small town in Madhya Pradesh. And the kind of change which Jindal brought in him is something which impressed me because I could understand that something is happening inside here where a student like him has changed in just three months. You know, in just three months, he had changed. And that's the kind of overall development which is happening here. It's not just about studies here. The students also have a cultural cell here. The students also have sports cell. You name things and it has, you know, the, the, the university has it. It, it is for the, it is specifically for the 360 development of the student. It's not just to make student a studious student. And that's the beauty about this course called as law also. What is JD program of, U, uh, of US? Uh, JD program of US is basically the law graduation in US. It's a post graduation, it's called a Juris Doctor. And um, uh, just because you've asked me, let me tell you something about Jinder Global Law School. Jinder Global Law School also has a program. It's called as a dual degree program where a student can spend four years inside this campus. And then the rest of the two years, we send that student to US where for the next two years, the student will be studying JD in US. It's a kind of arrangement which we have at many of the universities in USA, including the Cornell Law School, which is the Ivy League, of course, where there's a selection process inside the campus. I also should tell you this, there's a selection process inside the campus. Not all the students are sent. Selected students are sent. Selection is also done internally here. And the, the, the law school, which is uh, uh, in US, also se selects a student for that. So that is something which we have an arrangement with. If you're interested in that course, please do let us know. I'll, I'll mail you separately or I'll, I'll talk to you separately over the phone on this course. Uh, I just wanted to ask that, do you prefer NLU or private university? Uh, okay, see, each has its own plus and minuses. A private university, for example, like Zindal, uh, I'll tell you, or I'll speak only about my, uh, the, this university and I'll tell you why had I been in your place, I would have chose this for a simple reason that Every university will have certain restrictions related to faculties, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. In this campus, as a law student, if I come and if I observe, what I see here is there are a lot of faculties who inspire, there are a lot of faculties who travel that length with you to create that kind of a person of you. That is something which, as a law student, I would have wanted. I'm not saying that LLUs don't have, but then again. There are more number of them inside this university. That is what I'm saying. Because as I said, there are around six to seven NLUs inside this law school. And that's why I would prefer this place because you've given me an option I'm telling you. I would prefer this place because this place also works on certain areas which probably a law school will not even see. Because when we talk about placements, as I said, we have an agency called as, we have a department called as Career Services, uh, which, which 360 degree works for it. Okay, uh, waiting to join the Jindal fraternity. Thank you, Yashika. I thought it was a question, but it was not. Uh, about the LLB plus JD six year course, I've already told you. If you have more questions, you can ask me separately. Is it good to pursue MBA after three LLB? See, it depends upon you. What do you want to be? Why do you want to do that MBA? That's my question to you. If you want to work with a with a uh, when a, with the corporate at a managerial level with a, a ammunition called as law with you, yes, you should do it because MBA as a degree also gives you a lot of edge because you understand those nitty gritties of management, marketing, HR, many other things. And when you are powered with a law degree, it makes you you know a, a, a person who's superior than many people who don't have it. Placements I've already discussed, so I'm not going into it. Can you speak something about the LLB three-year course? LLB three-year course, see, that's one of those preferred courses by students who might have not done the five-year course or had not made up their mind, and then they do a graduation, and then they realize that, no, law is my calling. So that student goes for it. If you're asking specifically about our, 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 uh, our LLB, let me be very clear. Our LLB 
is very similar to the five year course which we have in terms of faculty facilities and everything else inside this campus it's just that those students stay here for three years and they study the course as recommended by bar council of india and as curated by many other as in, as additional subjects so that is something which i can tell you why jindal if you ask me all those reasons i gave for five years they are also available for the three years uh will the three year course of legal studies in clb be, be benefit as compared to five see it's again it's upon student you appear for lsat you have to decide five year course is a lot more integrate uh, integrate as it's an integrated program it is quick oh it is quick I, i'm a five year student believe me when i was in the first year i started thinking oh my god what is happening because every now and then things were becoming so quick law was being taught to me and there was a time when i started thinking that am i mature enough for it but somehow i did you know so it's not like it's impossible but then we are creating one more choice for the student that in case if he believes that he is not ready to do law rather he would want to study more about law he can join this so it's up on you the choice is yours both the courses are here both the courses will have the same kind of faculties the courses are different as i said and i've already explained what is uh, ba legal studies it's for you to decide so you can decide it later on also as of now what i would rather say is appear for lsat once you get a call letter for both the courses come to us because the call letter will be sent for both the courses then we can sit and decide I, I i think a one on one personal counseling session is something which we can do and then we can decide so don't worry about it semester of our college might be okay so nana has left some just uh, see online classes running don't worry about it we, if if the situation situations cannot compel us to you know do these things what kind of so people have left i think those people who have left we'll send it to you separately i'm not answering those questions because most of them are repeat questions <coughs> what are the comparative advantages we have for the 3 year and the 5 year program in 5 year program from the very first year you will be taught law subjects and i'll again repeat it's 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 not advantages it's upon you how you make advantage of it it's not like someone is pushing you and someone is saying this has to be done you are the choice maker here we have just created one more choice for you after a lot of research this course has been made because in us we have seen it as a seen it as a trend that there are students who are opting for these kind of courses so we have just created one more course for uh, for a student what is the extent i said 75 percentage that is the extent and that is the top bracket 75% is the top bracket i have a confusion to a uh, inclination towards business or law what should how should i clarify okay see business is completely different law is completely different though doing law can create a good entrepreneur i'll tell you what is law all about law is all about rational thinking logical thinking and deciding things that's what law is all about believe me because law is not something which can be just done because someone feels that okay i argue a lot sorry that's not the right parameter the right parameter on the other hand is you understanding that you have a uh, acumen for doing and that's why i'm requesting you to give lsat because this questions answer you'll get only if you score if you're scoring above 80 percentile in lsat believe me you have an acumen for law you can appear for other entrance examinations also because there are entrance examination called as ipm etc you know ipm for uh, the integrated uh, bba program etc bba mba program give that examination also see what you are worth that is more important a person like me without even meeting you cannot just advise you i can just tell you that okay this is this this is this you appear in those entrance examinations see where your strength is and then go for it so you should be appearing for lsat also and you should be appearing for uh, you know the other entrance examinations also and see where you, where, where, where you are getting lsat examination date as of now is 17th of may as of now if you have registered for it they are they will pursue you they will tell you that what is the change date don't worry about it we are taking care of everything but then it's not us who decides it's the government which decides again i repeat So the government increases the uh, extends the uh, lockdown etc we may have to change as of now we have not changed it and as i said students who are appearing for clad it's a very good opportunity for you because we are right now ahead of clad so if you give this examination even as a mock even to test yourself it's a good examination which will also prepare you for 
flat vessels now it is looking a lot like LSI. Has any case fascinated you beyond what you expect? Case, yeah, there are a lot of cases uh, beyond what you, I, I don't understand the question as such, Joshua. Uh, I hope you can just email it to me. My email is given there. If it is not given, you can just write down. It's D Krishna, D K R I S H N A at jgu.edu.in. You can just email it to me. Cases, there are a lineage of cases, right? From Keshavanda Bharti, the very recent uh, case of, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the section 377 of IPC. All those cases have always fascinated me. So it's like, if you're asking me about that, that's the answer to it. What to do to become a barrister? My ambition is to become barrister. This is a separate examination which you have to give for barrister. Uh, in India, I guess in Mumbai and in Kolkata, you have a separate examination which you can appear for. In case if you want to become uh, a barrister abroad, again, there they have an examination and doing a law degree and then specifically preparing for it, you, know, you, you, you can achieve all those ambitions. Uh, your advice for students who are skeptical about cracking and getting into, uh, why are you skeptical? That is my question. <laughs> what makes you so skeptical? It's an examination called as LSAT, which you have to appear. You need to crack it. Then if there is some skeptical, see, don't decide on any law school unless and until you don't visit it once. I know I'm, I'm telling you something which may be a bit heavy on the pocket, but then it's about your life. It's one decision for the next five years of your life and then beyond it. I think that much investment is something which you can do. Visit the campus. There are three things which you should consider first. And the most important thing is faculties. Believe me, I'm from a law school. I am nothing but an amalgamation of what all the, the faculties who, who taught me. So there are students who come in, as in I teach also, there are students who come and tell me that, sorry, you explained it so well. And I just tell them that I, I copy my faculties. Very simple. The way they have taught me, I've just copied those things. And that's how I, I teach. So, you know, what they are teaching becomes important to you when you are, if you end up becoming a teacher, if you go to the court of law, whatever you are doing in life, believe me, that is very important. I again repeat, it's a profession, so faculty. Second, library. Almost 50% of your time in a law school, you're going to spend it in library. Not just reading, you might sit there, you, want, you, you would want to see some documentary. There are a lot of activities which you do in a law school library. And that is something which you should see that do you have enough resources or not? If you want to participate in an international move, do you have enough resources available in the library through which you can go and research and, you know, and compete? So these are those things which you should personally go and remove those skeptics about. Because there are students who come and tell me that you're very expensive, but you should see the kind of facilities, faculties, and everything which is provided here. Basically, it involves a cost. Would you compromise on the fact that on your packages? <laughs> you know, that, that's a good answer which uh, I can't name that person, but someone from the National Law School is a great friend of mine who asked me that when we increase the fees, we just ask one student, the students, we also need to pay the faculty. So when we have to pay those faculties and we have to maintain them, there are costs which are involved. And for that, if you are good, that is why scholarships are. If you are good enough, come now. Use those things and then use the scholarship and get into law school. 200 students are getting scholarship. A lot of the 600. So think about it. You can be one of them. And I said, it's, it's for scholars. How to figure out if law is a choice? I've already given that answer. If those five reasons which I have given you, one answer, one specific answer to all those who are asking me this question is, please appear for LSAT. If you are scoring above 70 percentile, 80 percentile, you are made for law. That's the kind of examination it is. Believe me, it is not an entrance examination because in India, people think that it's an entrance examination while if you ask me, you should see how the questions are made. The questions are not made by just academics. There are certain psychologists also who are involved in making of the questions. So that's the way they are creating their questions. It's not just like, you know, they're creating questions just for the heck of it, so that, you know, they can create a parameter through which they can kick out students and they can select you. No, that entrance examination called as LSAT is specifically to test those qualities do you have. So in this in the seminar where, where, when I was taking the webinar also, I told you that appear in this examination to test do you have that acumen to do law or not? Right? So that's my answer to all of those students or parents who are asking me this question. 
what are the major specializations offered in bblb okay there are a lineage of specializations you name corporate in corporate itself there are so many specializations which you can offer in intellectual property rights there are new new avenues which are getting added up when i say intellectual property rights students may think about uh, um, copyrights patents etc but there are new things like geographical geographical indications traditional knowledge etc etc which are coming here and believe me we are super updated with all these things we are the most updated law school i'll tell you why because we have faculties who are not just graduates from india but they are post graduates from abroad they have done their teaching abroad and they carry that kind of vast experience with them they come here that's the kind of experience sharing which they do with our students so they are always in touch with whatever is happening any for example the kind of times which we are living in i am 100% sure there is going to be some law which is going to to regulate virology in india as in study of viruses because that's exactly why we are in such kind of a trouble it has to be regulated and i am sure you within 6 months probably we are going to have that kind of a specialization also of production whatever new specialization you, you you name it we have because we have those kind of faculties which are here and that's where i appreciate our hr also because the kind of work which our hr does is appreciable because they will have so many resumes and they know where to fill in whom to select who is the person whom we need this specialization we require someone to teach it so that's the kind of academic orientation with this campus has and you know that helps us to create those kind of specializations also can you help me out about lsat for llm uh, okay mohit what i'll do is uh, i'll share your number i hope you have recorded your number with us so uh, our, our, my team member anugya or anshu is going to give you a call and they are going to help you that how lsat for llm and where you have to appear what about all your questions is anshu is going to help you out with that don't worry so you know we will we'll reach out to you why how much one should score score i've already given you the you know criteria see don't ask me how much aim for 99 percentile i'm again giving you that hint aim for 99 percentile and make sure that you you know get a scholarship here and that's what we motivate students to so don't think that i should be at the bottom level think about the top level and it's not okay uh, in the video links which you could see i have uh, you know uh, i i have uh, uh, posted the interview of the all india rank 1 of lsat last year there were three uh, rankers i have recorded uh, an interview with pulkit who was a topper just listen to that interview and he will also guide you that how lsat as an examination helped him how he topped and you know it's 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 a great interview believe me and that will give you a lot of hints and then you know uh, it will it, it will help you to score much higher and because that is my belief because most of the students who have attended that interview have given me that response after 3 years of bl uh, i've already answered that so i'm just skipping some questions here but don't worry if your question is unanswered we'll surely mail back your answers to you right so i'm skipping those questions which are repeat questions how can we prepare for lsat in this covid 19 i gave you an idea khan academy i will send you the link also don't worry about it i'll send you the link where you can have an idea about how you can and it is absolutely free that is the best part about it though there is a donation which they ask for so in case if you are generous enough you can donate otherwise it's absolutely free lsat requires students to solve questions on analytical uh, logical reasoning so the candidate not good in logical reasoning should not do law no 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 see that's the that's the difference of logical reasoning in lsat it's not the same logical reasoning which you might be acquainted with the reasoning which they ask you is more on decision making it's not on solving a certain complex situation through mathematical measure something no it's basically a complex situation like uh, i'll i'll use a cue from what uh, you know our last year's topper said he said an entrance examination which asked me when was akbar born is not testing me how good a lawyer i am on the other hand a uh, examination which tests me on a question will ask me what would have akbar done in this scenario test me on whether i am a better lawyer or not and that is what lsat's logical reasoning questions are 
it may seem when you read because you know we have a problem in reading so when we read we may think oh my god there are there are a lot of things that are written now but they are basically setting a premise to you they are basically giving you an idea and they are trying to test you that among those four options in this given scenario what would you have to say so it is less of analytical reasoning and more of mapping your brain that what is and, and, and how much logical you are and i think yes if a student is not scoring well in lsat as I, 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 I understood a lot of examinations in india it's one of the most closest examination and i think yes the answer if you ask me is if you are scoring around some less percentile you will rethink your options how will we send the links for online classes you we i have already given you an idea all the people who have attended will receive an email id where we will send you those that so there are some repeat questions which are happening here so i'll just bang them throw light on aspects of judge advocate general uh that's one of those <clears throat> sanjali that is one of those things which many students nowadays are aspiring for and they want to become judge advocate general is a person who carries court martials and at times when promoted also becomes the judge in uh, army uh, navy and also in uh, air forces in air forces though the selection process is a bit different judge advocate general are law students who have to crack an examination and once they crack those examinations they are recruited into army navy and air force as lawyers who have to carry on these processes of as i said the court martial etc etc so there are a lot of my friends who have become jack they are all army personals with all this army attitude which and it, it it's always a pleasure to meet them because they have a kind of authority of army and they are also lawyers so that's my cue on the scene Our scholarships awarded to economic backward. No, see, as I said, we do not have any kind of reservation criteria in general. We are specifically based out of merit. That's it. now i would also want to uh, give you an idea there are many students who are asking me about llb and llm uh, i want to tell you all one thing we are going to conduct a specific seminar a very different seminar which where we won't be disturbing the uh, undergraduate students a specific seminar only for llb students and llm students fair enough so there we are also going to have a talk on some recent uh, you know legal thing where it can be a bit of an informative session also for you with that we are also going to answer to many of other questions of yours also plus we'll also be answering your questions here also don't worry okay so we'll have we'll be having a separate session for llb and llm students as well how to connect to me separately i've already given you my email id so if you have a question you can just email it there what is the cut off for the legal studies program as of now there is no cut off because the examination is still not done right <laughs> so once you appear for the examination then we'll be able to give you a, even a cut off for uh, ba legal studies there are a lot of students who are uh, who are filling up form for ba legal studies or you are also open you can also go and fill it up but the entrance examination is same it's lsat for both of them is lsat an online examination as of now it is not an online examination but yes they are trying hard to make it an online examination given the scenario Uh, your interest will be protected day one. So don't worry. You know, uh, don't be skeptical about just anything. You have filled up the form. The examination will be conducted. It can be online. It can be offline, depending upon the government regulations. We have to respect that. We have to also respect the virus, the coronavirus. So, you know, depending upon that, we'll be deciding upon it. So don't worry about it. If it is online, and let me tell you one more thing, we don't conduct the examination. The examination is conducted by LSAC USC. so they are the ones who would decide upon it in consultation with the government and they will be communicating directly with you even then if you have any questions you can still ask us okay but again what all answers we are giving we are giving it via them <laughs> so it's like they are the ones and that's the uh, transparency of admission which we keep it's like we do not conduct our own examination we have a third party who conducts the entrance examination and gives the scores so that's the transparency which we follow 
So they are the ones who will be conducting it. If it is online, they'll surely let you know. So don't worry, Devan. As of now, things the way they are looking, probably there's going to be an online exam. If it is going to be, they'll let you know. They'll also let you know the process through which uh, this online exam is actually done. Okay. Is it necessary to register with GGLS? I've already registered for LSAT. Uh, the answer to it is yes. I'll tell you why. Because if you're interested in JGLS, you have to come and fill up a form with us also. But if you want to wait, there is a, a, a you know, till LSAT gets over, we are ready for it because our, uh, our uh, application forms will be, uh, you know, available even after LSAT also. But I would advise you to go ahead and fill it up because the end, uh, you know, the, the end few weeks, there's a lot of traffic and there can be issues. So fill it up and relax. My email ID is D Krishna, which is D, D for Delhi, K R I S H N A at the rate jgu.edu.in. JGU is Dindal Global University. jgu.edu.in. How are moot courts at our college? I would request you to go and visit our Facebook page where you would see the kind of moot courts which we have won this year, qualified this year, uh, you know, the kind of moot courts which are conducted here, who sponsors them, you know, the topmost law firm sponsors them, and the moot society which we have. There's a separate page of moot court society also which we have, but on our Mother page at uh, Jindal Global Law School page, you will get all those info with photographs. What would 75% imply? 75% <clears throat> of the tuition fees will be waived off. And it's not just for one year, it's for all the five years. But there is a cap on it. The cap on it is <clears throat> for this five years, you should not be involved in any, dis any disciplinary. Uh, activity as in you should not be called up by the disciplinary committee and you have to maintain the attendance etc etc those are the basic things which you can keep right it runs throughout the five years and 75 percent means 75 percent of your fees the tuition fees will be waived off this law only for studio student not at all Law is not for studious students, it's for smart students who are good at reading, interpreting, and also using the written word of law to their advantage. So it's for smart students, it's not for studious students, because I've seen studious students also fail in law, because they may rot learn, they may be able to score well, but it's not a course which is only purely on paper. There are a lot of activities which you have to follow in that law school. It's, it involves a lot of interpersonal things also. Can we go for corporate law? Yeah, I've already answered that. See, fees is a concern, I understand, but then you have to understand that it's a kind of an investment which you are making here. Once you have done that, after five years, you have to think about a scenario given the recession, given the economic scenario we are living in. You have to be someone whose employability has to be that where you know you are much ahead of people. And that's a kind of an investment which you are making. That's the way I would see. You know, I've already answered that by, by by positioning myself in your in your shoes. Do you have a BLS LLB? No, no, we don't have a BLS LLB. Uh, it's like B, if you are referring to BA Legal Studies, it's not a five-year integrated program. You have to do three years of BA Legal Studies, and then you have to do three years of LLB. So it's a six-year program, and that's how we have created that course. Is it a right choice to take up a three-year law for passion even after holding a graduation in engineering? Uh, see, I know a lot of engineering students who have who have done law and they are doing quite well. I'll tell you why, because when it comes to fields like patents, engineering students have a higher edge. There are students who have done commerce, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, who have not been able to cope up well with, uh, you know, uh, uh, with patents, etc. So there are specific re regions in law also where uh, 
students of engineering colleges have done really well and a three llb is a, is a good choice for them that's the reason why iit kharagpur also started a specific uh, course in law because intellectual property rights there is a lot of options for engineering students or students who are from sciences or maxes uh, you know to come and uh, explore it so after engineering theory course makes a lot of sense and there are students who are doing it how many students appear for jgl is uh, it keeps on increasing last year uh, it uh, the students who appeared for lsat were around 8000 they say it's obviously going to increase more with whatever is happening around we are seeing a lot of surge among students who are appearing uh, for you know, the, the number of applications have taken a jump so this year is going to be above 8000 if you are not able to find the video links also i think we have created the video links here we'll send you all these documents with links the mail which will show you don't worry so there will be two mails one will be a thank you mail which is auto generated which will be sent to you we'll send you a separate personalized mail so you know just wait for that mail in case you have not received all these things how are holidays and cultural activities planned in law school see uh, the law school here is it is a kind of a celebration for students it's not just studies as i said cultural activities etc which is planned in our law school is as such that i can tell you i, I can give you an uh, example we hosted uh, uh, nasiruddin shah who came here and uh, gave the stellar performance in einstein einstein was uh, conducted here so you know it's open to everyone so even staff can also participate so we witnessed that very recently we had one of the you know uh, one of the most famous percussionist in the world who came here he i, I forgot his name i'm not remembering but he travels with a lot of rajasthani musicians who he creates cubicles and he places them and then he is a percussionist who would stand and create a musical wonder out of it so it's like you know there are a lot of activities when you say cultural I'm not able to uh, configure things and tell you but as i said if you visit our facebook page or if you follow us on instagram you can <clears throat> have a better idea about the about the kind of activities which we have with that we also have a cultural fest which is conducted in our campus it's called as biswa mil uh, it's it's one of those activities uh, it's one of those fest which many universities around the country wait for so they wait for it so that it should happen and they get to visit the campus that's the kind of uh, fest that happens here so you can get all those ideas from our instagram and facebook page how much should i be ready to pay after 75% scholarship you can reduce see it's the 75% scholarship is out of the tuition fees so uh, you know you can you can see that the, the, the amount of fees which you have been provided out of that you can just wave off 75% how is jindal dealing with ib students considering their board exams are cancelled see ib students a lot of ib students uh, are studying in our campus and each year they come as in I mean, we know the the kind of examination delays and the, uh, the, the so we are ready to give you what we call as a, you know a provisional admission and the moment you present us with our documents you know we we, we don't we don't have a problem we'll admit you because that's something which is which is not Uh, created by you or uh, we can't help it that's the kind of situation which which has happened so don't worry about it please apply we will find solutions for it how many seats in blb we have 300 seats in blb and 300 seats for bbl and uh, i would repeat that the, the students who have not appeared for lsat first of may is the last date and they're not going to exchange so if you are still waiting for something please go ahead and you know please please go ahead and register for lsat the website is discoverlaw.in please do appear for that examination it is very very important without lsat we do not permit students so please do go and register for it the photo is not getting uploaded okay i'll i'll share a number with you it's a uh, lsat helpline number which they have in fact on their website they have a, a helpline number 
So you can go there and you can register there. Uh, you can contact them. They'll help you out with that. I'll give you the... It's 8989800123. So we'll email it to you this also, but it's easy to find if you go on Discover Law website, go to the contact us tab, and then they have a helpline number, which is like 24 into seven open. So you can just contact them. They'll help you out with uh, whatever issues you are facing. Okay, so many repeat questions here. How many questions do we need to score right for? See, there is no negative marking. So you should appear for as many questions. In fact, I would say go for all the questions. There is no negative marking, right? You should appear for all the questions. Okay, people are not able to find video links. There are three videos which we have uploaded here. If you're not able to find that, see on the... Uh, on the dash here, you can see that there are handouts which are written. Below that, you can see the video link. Okay, we'll mail you, don't worry. We'll email it to you. Part, you have asked me if you can give a genuine and realistic answer about what question. What about food? Food is taken care of inside the campus. Uh, so Dexo, a French company, is the one which takes care of the food. It's a completely vegetarian campus. Uh, we only serve vegetarian food inside the campus, but then for students who have a, uh, you know, who are non-vegetarian, we have a separate food court for them where they can, you know, go and uh, uh, enjoy Subway, Domino's, there are many brands which are there. So that's about food. LSAT score to get admission, I've already told you. LSAT score depends upon the examination. Last year, the person, the uh, the cutoff was uh, the cutoff was 60 percentile. This year, it may increase. So there are the the the, the videos which I wanted to share with you all. Uh, believe me, they had most of the questions. So on YouTube, you can see a lot of uh, videos of ours, uh, like with uh, JGU. So that gives, that may give you as in, we are all holed up, right? We cannot, uh, we cannot just go out. We are staying at home. So YouTube, we have a lot of videos where you can see all those things which are happening inside the campus, the facilities. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 360 degree vision of uh, Jindal. Uh, we being ranked one, there is a video on that also, which I wanted to share with you, which is here, but somehow we are not able to see. You can see that how we developed all these three years. You can also get an idea about library and everything is given there. We have a, about if you ask us, uh, are students allowed to go to the campus to buy? No, 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 it's, it's you are allowed to go out of the campus. You can go out uh, provided your parents allow it. As in, there's a strict regulation. We are a very strict campus that space. If your parents call up and they, they seek the permission, from the warden, the warden permits only then you are allowed to go outside. If you are talking about essentials inside the campus, we have every facility for all the essentials. In fact, you know we also buy things from that store. So we have a campus store, we have cafes. There's a lot of things that are inside the campus. So you need not go out. So we have tried maximum that our students should not go out, and everything is available inside the campus. Okay, guys, I think we are at the end of it because I've answered most of the questions. What sets OP Jindal apart from the top five national law schools? Faculty, facilities, and in the coming years, if you go to any university abroad, it has started happening even now. Go to Harvard, go to Yale, they know OP Jindal University. That's the best part about it. With the kind of student exchange program, the kind of international collaborations which Indal has, that sets it apart. And with QS ranking, which is accepted throughout the world, now we are the ranked number one law school in India. Even all the universities, 
the corporates around the world, they also check QS ranking. So even they know it. That's what sense is about. Are Sunday outpasses given to students? Yes, there are a lot of students who live around. So Saturdays and Sundays are holidays, so they go they go out. As in, they go to their homes, and that's the kind of outpass which we give that they can go out. That's not a problem. When will the LSAT results arrive? That's given on the website. I hope you are registered. Please register on LSAT because once when you register, they give you an entire timeline. So as of now. The date which is given is two weeks after LSAT. So they will be releasing that within two weeks. So don't worry. But all the date line, et cetera, that is given in that uh, website. Is it difficult for science students to crack LSAT? Not at all. Who, as in, I don't know uh, what makes you ask me this question. No, science students are much more analytical in their approach. That is what, as in, the topper in my batch, she was from science, I remember. And she was very good with her analytical brain of mine. So, you know, analytical side of mind and, you know, that helped her a lot. So I think there is no difference between a science student, etc. Et in fact, I, I would fi find you a bit sharper on it. Is LSAT only necessary? Yes, LSAT is the only way through which we take admissions. Yeah. Because, you know, we have collaborations throughout the world, throughout uh, U.S. universities also. So in U.S., if you want to do law, you have to, you have to, uh, you know, uh, appear for LSAT. And LSAT is the examination which we accept. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for appreciating. Thank you. Any more uh, questions? See, if you have more questions, don't worry. We'll be, you know, taking it. More, we'll be taking more webinars and we'll be more interacting with you. And uh, Priyal, do you have a question? Can you just send it to me? Want to know about the JD program? The JD program, as in uh, the dual degree program, it is offered by uh, Jindal to our students who are our in house students. So, what we do is there is a specific GD, a CGPA, etc., which you have to maintain. It's a proper selection process where when you are inside the campus and when you opt for that, within four years, you have to complete your BLLB course in, in India, staying at Jinder. Uh, there are some extra times, et cetera, which you, uh, which you, are, which you are given to. Apart from that, uh, within four years, when you have completed this, we send you, you need not pay uh, you know, tuition fees for the JD course in US, but the stay and the travel, et cetera, that is your, because whatever you're paying us is the tuition fee. So the tuition fees is taken care of, you go to US and for the next two years, you'll be enrolled with those, uh, uh, you know. So uh, in the mail which we'll send, we'll also send you a brochure which talks about international collaboration. So it has the name of all those colleges also, uh, Cornell, Arizona University, those are those colleges which, which we have this joint JD program. You'll get an idea about that also. Foreign placement, yes, there are a lot of foreign uh, play, uh, uh, firms which come for uh, placements here. They do, they do it because we, if we have, Collaborations with foreign universities, obviously, we have foreign placements also. Yeah, Vipshana, what I'll do is the video links are not available. I don't know what has happened, why you're not able to see it. We'll send it to you in the mail. We'll send you all those videos. Stammering does not hinder the ability to do law. No, no, no. See, we are now living in a changed world. If you are specially able, if you have even stammering, which is something, it doesn't provided you are able to convey your idea better. In fact, I would say if you do law and uh, throughout these five years, you'll be speaking so much, probably you will control stammering. <laughs> you know, that will go away. Because stammering is not a, a, a disability. It's something which stops you because there is some problem in you comprehending things. So that will be taken care of the moment you do it. So I'm not, you know, probably it, it is something which cannot be controlled in your case, but it should not create a problem. For you. On which materials can I rely for LSAT preparation? Because lockdown has made delivery of material possible. Yeah, I think the Khan Academy lectures are the absolute thing which you should be referring to. And those, uh, if you have got that mail uh, where all the uh, study material has been sent to you. Those are the study materials which are right now available. And if you don't have that material, I'm so sorry. Probably LSAT will found out, find out some solution where they are able to send you an e-copy. So I'll suggest that to them. 
after LLB, can we join LLM here? No, you have to give an entrance examination again. It's, so we don't have a joint LLM. For students who are from BA legal studies and doing LLB, that can be transit, provided you score a certain percentile in LZ. That, that is there. But for LLM, you'll have to again appear for an examination. I'm so sorry. Scholarship is for all the five years. I've already repeated that. It's, it's not for just one year. It's for all the five years. So I think uh, it was a great time talking to each one of you. And uh, thank you so much for being such a great audience. And uh, uh, I hope to see most of you uh, appearing for LSAT and then joining us here. We'll be here to welcome you. And uh, if there are more questions, kindly email it to us. Prepare well. <clears throat> all the best for all your examinations. Stay at home and uh, try to be, you know, as safe as you can because you should not give away your life to a virus. Very simple. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great interacting with each one of you.